What's up guys? It is great to see your smiling faces. It's just so good to be together, even if it's this way. In this video, we'll talk about the Myers-Briggs personality assessment. All right, so as we go through these personality types, be thinking for yourself and reflecting on your own personality and what you've learned about yourself so far at this stage in your life. And then at the end, I'll give you a resource to take this personality test for free online and we'll interpret the results together. All right, let's get into it. Now the Myers-Briggs was actually developed by a mother and daughter combo, Catherine Cook Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers. Now what's really crazy is that neither of them had any formal psychology training, just really, really acute senses of observation of other individuals. And this Myers-Briggs personality test has really developed into one of the most popular well-researched psychometric tools available today. It's taken over 2 million times annually and has been translated into over 30 languages. Now there's a few different things that we have to understand before we can take this test and then interpret it. And these are the different axes of measurement of your personality. Now the first one is introversion versus extroversion. And this is the one that's most familiar to everybody. It's really how you get your energy. Introverts are energized by spending quiet time alone or with a small group. They tend to be more reserved and more thoughtful. So an introvert, you know, raise your hand if you're an introvert, right? If you are an introvert, then you like to have one-on-one -on -one time. You like small, intimate groups of friends. You prefer maybe curling up by the fire with a book or a TV show with, a, with one or two or three friends instead of going out to a party or going to a large social gathering. An extrovert, on the other hand, is energized by spending time with people in active, busy surroundings. And usually the more people, the better. The more social interaction, the better. They tend to be more expressive and more outspoken. Okay, so they might be quick to raise their hand and to give an opinion, or quick to be the one telling the story in the circle of people at the party. Okay, so there are introverts and extroverts one is not better than the other, it's just where do you fall on that spectrum and how do you get your energy? Sensing versus intuition. This is how a person really takes in information from the outside world. So sensors focus their five senses and are interested in information that they can directly see or hear or smell even, etc. They tend to be hands-on learners and are often described as practical. So those people who have to really get their hands dirty in order to learn a concept, they have to do it themselves. They might be sensors. Intuitives focus more on abstract levels of thinking. They're more interested in theories and patterns and explanations, and they are often more concerned with the future than with the present. And sometimes they're described as being creative. Okay, so sensors, they sort of live through their knowledge. They have to experience it with their bodies. Whereas intuitives more often think through and reason through and come up with theories and explanations for things while the sensors are out there experiencing those things. So again, one's not better than the other. It's just how do you make sense of the outside world? Now, thinking versus feeling, this is how a person makes decisions. So a thinker tends to make decisions with their heads. They are interested in finding the most logical, reasonable choice. A thinker is going to make a pros and cons list, and they're going to take emotion out of the picture altogether. Now, a feeler, on the other hand, they tend to make decisions with their hearts. They're interested in how the decision will affect other people's emotions as well as their own, and whether it fits with their values. So again, two different ways of making decisions, logical and rational versus based on emotion. Now, sometimes, right? One of these will be better than the other in certain situations. For instance, if it's, um, if you are evaluating which university you want to attend or what your career direction is going to be, you probably should think through that instead of feeling your way through it with emotion. Whereas in relationships, oftentimes, if we just rationally think through things, then that emotional, that very valid emotional side of, um, those relationships will be ignored and that's not good either. And so we tend to have a dominant thinking versus feeling, but it's not to say that we can't do the other one. It's just which one sort of dominates our decision-making process. And then finally, judging versus perceiving. So this is how a person organizes the world around them. A judger will appreciate structure and order. They like things to be planned and they really don't like last minute changes. A perceiver, on the other hand, appreciates flexibility, spontaneity. They tend to leave things really open so that they have room to change their minds. 
Now these four spectrums are not necessarily one or the other. They're not binary, but when you take the Myers-Briggs, it will essentially put you in one or the other category. And I know millennials and Gen Zers, they don't like to be put in categories, that's okay. And these things may change slightly over time, but really not that much. It might depend on you know the time of day or the season of life that you're going through. Um, if you're right on the line on some of these, you might flip-flop, but for the most part, these are pretty stable throughout your life. Now, all of these result in what we call 16 types. These are sort of 16 basic personality types that have been studied and validated in the literature. And you can actually tell a lot about yourself when reading through your personality type. Um, I've heard from students in the past where they say, oh, Dr. Gooden, after looking at my personality type, it felt like I was reading about myself. And I felt the same way as well. I really enjoyed reading through this description of my personality type because it almost felt like that person who wrote that knew me. They, they knew what made me tick and what made me frustrated or what gave me energy. And it was a really sort of validating thing to read that and to realize, hey, that's okay. That's, that's just sort of how I'm geared, how I'm wired. And so again, let this be something that doesn't put you down or make you feel bad about you know, whether you're judging versus perceiving or feeling versus intuitive or, you know, you don't have to be like your friend. Instead, this is something that equips you to live out of your strengths and to continue working on some weak spots or to even let your friends know, hey, you know, this is kind of how I deal with these situations and I tend to do this. But but just know that when I do that, that's, that's sort of my wiring. It's nothing against you um, and it helps other people to know you better. Furthermore, it helps you to really empathize well with others, knowing that they might be a different personality type than you, and so they might perceive the world differently than you do. We're all looking at the world through a slightly different lens. So remember those things as you take this test. And what we're gonna do is go to, again, truity.com. Hopefully by now you've created your own free profile at truity.com so you can save all the results of these various personality tests. And you're gonna take this personality test read through the results. And what I'd like you to do is to, again, comment on this video down below in, um, in the comment section, you know, what was the most surprising thing to you and what was not surprising to you about your personality type? Did it shed any insights into who you are and into how you act? And do you agree or disagree with the results? All right, guys, so let me know down below. I'll comment with mine as well. And I'll see you guys on the next video.